I've touched on saturation before and wanted to circle back to give a more in-depth explanation of how I work with saturation and how I look at saturation as a whole. Now, I've taken a look at other videos on YouTube that has touched on saturation and some of them are very valid and they go in depth. I'll share those links with you. But right now, I'm gonna take a different approach. Check it out. So there are five different types of saturation that I lean on when doing a mix. We have transistor, transformer, tape, and tube. And the last one, believe it or not, is digital, and it's called hard or soft clipping. Now, of course, you're on YouTube, and you can find out about each and every one of these elements. But that's not why I wanted to do this video. I didn't want to go in depth about harmonics or about the tubes or the transformers we used to use, but more about the true benefits of using saturation and the key of using it at the right time. Now, what do I mean about the right time? Well, digital has to be the truest form of recording what we hear to a platform that we can play back. Now, back in the day, we had consoles and we had tape. Now, most consoles was based off transistors and transformers. Now, of course, we had outboard gear as well that was based off the same components, as well as tube. Now, all of this went to tape and all of these components shaped and molded our sound. Now in the late 80s, early 90s, we recognized that saturation could be used like a form of pre-compression. Hence, that's why you hear a lot of the 90s songs getting louder and louder. And this is before digital. Now, songs were sounding fuller, but you also had those songs that sounded a little thinner. It's because of the effect being pushed too hard so you can easily overdo it. And sometimes when trying to saturate every instrument, that's when you find yourself overdoing it. So my first rule of thumb is to find out why do you want to saturate an instrument or a bus? Is it for volume or is it for that saturated sound? Is it to control a vocal or an instrument? Or is it to control all the instruments and bring them out front? Or you can actually use saturation to push the instruments back in the mix. It's the same as compression, but without the pumping. Now, of course, with compression, if you compress too much, it'll make your instrument or vocal sound smaller. That's the same with saturation. If it's overdone, it will make it smaller or sound thinner. And that's what we're trying to stay away from, unless you want to do it as an effect. Now, I evolved in how I look at saturation. And nowadays, I look at it in three ways. To make something louder and more upfront, or to add it to a sound, to embellish it, to bring it out, to make it more fluffy or more warm, and not trying to make it louder or bring it out more in the mix. And the third way is for more control. Meaning, if I'm using a compressor and it's just not doing it for me, it's not controlling the dynamics of the sound or the mix, I may throw saturation in there before I actually compress. So my compressor isn't working as hard and it actually has an easier time compressing the sound that I'm going after. And the saturation is being used as a more controlling aspect in the sound. Now, I hope that makes sense. So let me show you what I mean. I have an instrumental here broken down by tracks. I have 19 stereo audio tracks. I have drums, bass, and keys. Let's check it out.
cool. Now what we have here is drums, bass, keys. And the only plugin that's on the channels is a trim plugin because I wanted to keep the faders at zero. So I kind of mixed it using the trim plugins just so I can get the right level going into the bus channels. Now, when I'm mixing, I do not do this. This is just for this test. And what I was originally going to do was a top five saturation plugin video. But the more I start doing that video, I said, why not actually break down how I use the saturation plugins and give you more of a top 10 and show you why and how I use saturation plugins. So let me explain what else is going on here. So all of these tracks are going into these buses. Now these buses have 10 different saturation plugins. The top five are more for loudness, to bring something up front, to make it more apparent. Now the next five is more for the vibe, is more to embellish the sound without making it louder or more aggressive, but maybe to lay into the track or around the track to give it more width or more depth or more sonic presence. Now here is a major key. Digital relies on peak level. The goal when mixing in digital is to get your mix to 0.01 and sounding the best and clearest or the dirtiest or the most vibe that you can make it. So if you're sending it to a mastering engineer, they can work off of that. Or if you're going to master it, this gives you a great starting point to make it even louder and sound better for your final product. So now that you know that digital relies on peak level, when we look at saturation, this brings up the RMS level or the LUFS level, making your sound or song to be perceived louder or more front or more fuller or heavier when monitoring it off the same peak levels. Now saturation is kind of like limiting. It brings the lower level audio up and it holds the top level audio right where you want it to be, essentially limiting it into the point of distortion. Now, of course, we don't want it to distort. So we bring it back down to a point where it's manageable to the point of saturation. Now, what I've done to these bus tracks is labeled it right underneath here. You'll see 3.0, 3.5, and so on. This is before I start saturating it. And these levels are based off peak levels. Now, usually on bus channels, I don't go over minus 3.0, just to leave headroom to go into my master chain. Now, my master chain is as usual. It's the mix bus in going into the mix bus out. Now, the mix bus in doesn't have any plugins. It's just a controller for the input to my mix bus out, which has all my master bus plugins. Now, in this test, I'm only using the VMR VCC as a console saturator, and that's going into the Pulsar Mu, and then that's going into the Waves L2. Now, before I turn on the VCC, the Pulsar Mu, and L2, let's look at the peak level. I'm gonna play it from a position where all the instruments are playing, and it's the loudest point of the song. Now, as you can see, it's generating a louder output. And based off just these tracks alone, though it's showing the same peak level on all of these buses, with all these tracks put together, it gives it a 2.4 dB volume jump in perceived loudness. So I know you're saying, yeah, yeah, that's cool, Mark, but where are you getting at? So if the peak level is the same on the output of the buses, then when we put on 
our master bus plugins. Let's see the difference. So I know what you're thinking. Well, Mark, duh, it sounds louder with the saturation plugins, and even the peak level shows that. And you're right, without the plugins, it's minus 7.0, and with the plugins, it's minus 4.6. So let's do this. With that same terminology and the same thinking, let's put a trim plugin to make up the volume difference, and let's see what happens. So as you can see, with the volume adjustment, with the saturation, it's still perceived louder and stronger. Now, let's add back the saturation, the compression, back on the master channel. Let's see the difference. So even though with or without the saturation plugins, it's hitting the master at minus 7.0, having the saturation on the channels makes the song more upfront, more punchy. And since we're doing the saturation in stages with compression, it's adding to that record sound that we all strive to get. Now with that said, I don't want you to get hung up on the systematic things that I'm doing like adding trim plugins to match levels, or this plugin is better than this one, or he hits his buses at minus three, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Mixing should be a free flowing experience. See what works for you. See what plugins more cater to what you do. Experiment is the key. Now, when I'm testing plugins, I do match RMS levels just to see what the plugin is doing. I may put one out of phase and play them both together to see exactly what it's doing. But that's the only time that I sit there and try to match levels. Other than that, I literally go through plugins and just mix. Now, it is key that I do gain stage throughout the process. And what I mean by that is I'll hit the plugin at its optimal level, meaning I usually hit plugins anywhere from minus 18 to minus 12. Not unless a plugin sounds better to hit it harder, where I may hit it minus 9 dB, or if I know it's a clean digital plugin like FabFilter Pro Q3, that plugin I don't have to worry about gain staging because it doesn't have none of the nonlinear aspects. Nonetheless, I still don't try to hit that plugin hard because I know that I'm going to be EQing, dynamic EQing, and so the volume may jump. And so whatever plugin I'm hitting after that, I wanna be cognizant to that and make sure that with the next plugin, I'm not overdoing it. I hope that makes sense. So let's move on. So let's go through the other saturation plugins that give me more volume. So first, let me talk about the plugin we have been using. It's from a company called United Plugins. And right now, it's three companies in one. And the one company that makes this plugin is Sound Device Digital. The name of the plugin is called Front Doll. It's made to emulate you running your tracks through a console so it's made to be put on every track. But for this test, I just put it on all the buses. Now they also make another great plugin called Royal Compressor. 
You may have seen that one on the Pulsar Mu video. They have some great plugins. You should check them out. Please note, I am a new beta tester for them. I have yet to beta test one of their plugins, but going forth, I will be beta testing their plugins. I just want to be upfront and be transparent with you guys. So since this plugin doesn't have an output, I do use it in patchwork and it works perfect. Check it out one more time. Okay, great. So now let's check out Plugin Alliance Black Box. Nice. So as you can hear, that one's more aggressive. It gets the drums really loud and really up front. I like that one more on drum buses and even the master bus. So now let's check out the SSL X Saturator. You've heard me talk about this one as well before on my last saturation video. Again, you can hear the aggressiveness of that saturation plugin. It's a great plugin. I love pulling out sounds with that one. It's great on snares and anything mid tone. All right, let's go to the next one. Next one is from Sound Toys. It's a very popular one. It's called Decapitator. It has five different saturation emulations. It's a really nice plugin. Check it out. Very nice. It holds the low end nice and tight. Really like that plugin. The next one is from Kush Audio. It's called Novatron. I absolutely love this plugin. It's a chameleon, meaning that it can be many different compressors. But the saturation on this, it's really aggressive and really nice. Check it out. That one sounds really nice. It has like a tube quality in the saturation where it softens up the snare and the kick, but still makes it nice and loud. I really like that one. And mix with the compressor takes it to a whole nother level. Okay, so those are my go-to loud saturation plugins where I need to bring stuff out. I need to push stuff up front. Those are my go-tos. Now, the next five are my mix in the cut. I might bring it out a little bit, but round it off. These type of saturation plugins, I use a little bit more because it just adds a little touch, brings it out a little bit, and a little bit goes a long way. Believe me when I say that. So let's start it off with the Avid Real Tape. Let's go.
I absolutely love that plugin. It's subtle, but really nice. And the more you add that plugin to your mix, it slowly brings out your track. Great plugin to have. Next, we have Crane Song Phoenix by the infamous Dave Hill. Wow, that plugin really has a great low end, has a nice punch. It does great on kicks and basses. I tend to use it for that. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next plugin, it's from Sonox. It's called the Oxford Inflator. Let's check it out. Very nice. The Oxford Inflator has been around a long time and it's still a great plug-in. Next up, Kush with the AR-1. Check it out. The Kush AR-1 is the emulation of the EMI RS-124 compressor, and it's a great plug-in. Well, last but not least, the Boss Maniac Compressor. Let's go. The Maniac Compressor is not an emulation of anything, but it does have a really nice saturated input drive. Now those last five saturated plugins are not about volume, but more about the art of saturation. So for me, I look at saturation plugins to give me volume or to give me a vibe. But with either one, it's more about giving me control over the audio. Whether it be a kick, a snare, or bass, keyboard parts to bring out, or a vocal, I'll use it before a compressor or even after. I'll use saturation in many stages, but I'm very careful not to overdo it. That is very important. You have to find your own workflow and what works best for you and what gives you the best sound you can get the best vibe or the best feel. I really hope this video helps you in your journey. Let's do it all again. See you on the next video. I'm on my way to you.